Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou kato. Tēnā kōroa, a kui rangatira. Tēnā koutou, a te ete whānau rāranga. Tēnā koutou, a taku whānau hoki. A, ma pango, ma whero, ka oti ai te mahi. No mai, tauti mai, ki taku whakari, e pā ana ki nā kai whatu e rua. Utia te rito, utia te rito, te arekeke, kei hea te koma ko e ko, ki mai ki aho, hea ha te a me anui, He tangata, he tangata, he tangata, he. So, um, when I was deciding to research two weavers um, and looking for a contrast, um, I was thinking I would look for a contemporary and somebody very traditional. And so the contemporary person would have been someone who'd been around just a short time, just beginning their journey. Um, but I've done some, you know, notable pieces. And obviously the traditional weaver, somebody very, very experienced, um, a master weaver, somebody um, of queer and uh, who was a bit, a, a bit of a tonga themselves. Um, so I looked initially at um, the kākahu for the Olympic Games. I was quite interested in that. And I saw that there was um, a new one being presented on the news. So um, I looked that up online and that led me to discover Ranui Narima. Um, she was born in 1946 in Ototahi in Christchurch. Um, her parents were Annie Harding and Richard Phillips. Ko Nai Tahu ko Kati Mamoi, Rato ko Nati Mutuna Ona Iwi. Uh, Ranui Narimo is the sister of Miriam Evans and with her she co-wrote um, The Art of Māori Weaving. Uh, she was married, Narimo was married to Harold Carr Judge Narimo. Mm. Um, he died in 1997 and uh, they had five children. When she married him, she moved to the West Coast and she lived for 26 years in Ōtira, working at Ōtira School as a teacher's aide and caretaker. Uh, Ranui is a New Zealand Māori master weaver and textile artist and she has an incredible list of achievements and involvements, uh, not least being obviously the kaifatu behind the New Zealand Olympic kākahu, which I will talk about shortly. She has chaired uh, Te Ropu Raranga Fatu o Aotearoa, the National Māori Weavers Collective. She was formally acknowledged in 2008 when she was appointed by Te Ropu Raranga Fatu and uh, New Zealand Māori Arts and Crafts Institute to the Kaihui Firitoi, Firitoi Group. She's a long-standing member of the Waitaha Cultural Council Trust. She's judged at multiple uh, Matatini competitions. Um, she's heavily involved in supporting Kapahaka and Te Rea Māori um, at many levels. Um, she's a long-term supporter of Te Atarangi teaching and learning Te Rea in her community in Ototahi. Um, in 1986, she was voted West Coast Woman of the Year. In 2018, she was the recipient of the Te Wakatoi na Tohu Ataki. Ihaka, the um, Sekingi Ihaka, Ihaka Award, which recognises recipients' lifetime contribution to Māori art. So this is this is my um, my weaver with a lifetime contribution and experience, obviously. Um, in 2020, in the New Year's Honours list, she was appointed an officer of the New Zealand Order of Merit for service to Māori art, um, particularly weaving. Uh, so um, she learned to weave from her husband's female relations. She said, I was sitting with Judge's grandmother, Mary, her sister, Naropi, and her daughter, Te Iwipani, and they were making kete, and I was watching them. 
they gave me some harakiki and they showed me what to do. I was all fingers and thumbs and they had a great time laughing as I tried to figure it out. Naropi, who is the queer with the mokokowai, would put her walking stick out and touch the strands and then I just knew she said I knew I was in the wrong place and I'd look at her and I'd shift it and she'd go, Carl, no! They would laugh and chatter away but I didn't mind at all because that's when I really got the feel of harakiki and knew, hey, this is something I want to do. Uh, Narimu has created individual works as well as collaborated on weaving projects with other master weavers. She has woven gifts for the British royal family, for the mayor and city of San Francisco. She's led national weaving projects creating 800 kete for um, the 2007 World Heritage Conference in Ototahi, Christchurch. In 2013, um, she led a project in Antarctica and she cre- creating two tukutu. Sorry, creating two tukutuku panels, helping to represent Māori culture at Scott Base. One of these panels symbolised Māori ancestors interwoven with the New Zealanders who had died in Antarctica, including the 257 passengers and crew killed in the 1979 Mount Erebus plane crash. The other panel paid tribute to the scientific work ongoing at the southernmost continent. Um, sadly, I've not been able to find images of these panels, but um, this picture here shows you the Poe that was unveiled at the base at the same time by Sir Mark Solomon. The Poe, the Kai Fakatiri or Teraki, the navigator of the heavens, was made um, out of West Coast Tortra, uh, was carved by Naitahu, um, as they represented the southernmost um, iwi in New Zealand. They're obviously the closest to Scott Base, to Antarctica. And uh, Norimu was the Arotahi Matua, senior advisor to Sir Mark Solomon, who was chair of the Runana or Naitahu. Um, <clears throat> as well as supporting weaving and te reo growth and learning, Narimu contributed to education initiatives, not least by establishing a Grammar Centre for Agile mm-hmm. Education that has also served and has also served on a committee that established the Tai Potini Polytechnic. Taipotini is more than a polytechnic, um, it also supports West Coast's economic and social development, getting behind great local initiatives, so quite important that. Um, she's uh, Rai Narima has worth many important kākahu, um, including toi, Tohu Aroha, Gift of Love, for use by members of the New Zealand chapter of Zonta International, um, they wear this at international conventions, uh, Nā Here o Te Ao, which was made to celebrate the millennium. And uh, the image here is of Kahupua. That was from 2003. But obviously the Kākahu I was wanting to talk about, um, or the ones I was wanting to talk about, are relating to the Olympics, because there is actually more than one. So um, the Mahu Tonga it was the first. This Tonga was worn by only the flag bearers of the New Zealand Olympic teams. Um, it was a symbol of Māori traditions at the core um, of our unique team culture. Te Mahu Tonga was created for our team by um, Ranui and the late Ta'owa Davis, and uh, that was in 2004. It was first worn at Athens in 2004 and presented to the New Zealand Olympic Committee by the Māori Queen um, in that particular year. Uh, the Kākahu took seven months of concentrated work to complete and that was led by Uranui Narimu. The cloak is not just an exquisite work of art but a mantle of leadership too. After each Olympic Games, Te Mahu Tonga is returned to her and she carefully lifts uh, the tube of the garment is stored in out of its pelican case, finding it never in the same condition which it left her. The glossy feathers often matted, sometimes many missing. She said, each time it comes back to me, it needs a bit of tidying up. I have replaced a few feathers on it and done quite a bit of tidying because when it is draped around the flag bearer, everybody wants to touch it and that's okay. A second exquisite cloak was um, loaned to the team by her and worn alongside Te Mahutonga at the opening ceremonies in Rio 2016, Tokyo 2020 and Beijing in uh, 22. Um, so where I'd come across um, the article I'd seen on the news recently about the new kākahu being presented and uh, this is Te Hono Ki Matariki 
and uh, named to, con- to, to conjoin it to the current to Mahutonga um, and link it back to here. It took 16 months. There's something like 500 whenu in it, uh, nearly 10,000 um, huru kiwi, and it took 12 kairanga uh, to process and hand weave it. I think there was, she said, there was three more hands on, um, but definitely took a lot of a lot of people, and a lot of araha. So with the nations. Um, are now allowed to represent, be represented by two flag bearers, so one male, one female. Um, te Hono Ki Matariki will shine alongside Te Mahutonga, so we have the two together. And uh, she said it's about providing something that allows our athletes to go out there on the world stage and represent us in the best way they can. It's wonderful to be able to hand it over, but it's also emotional for me because there has been so much aroha put into it. Um, it was blessed by. Um, King Yi Tuhaiti at Turangawawe Marae and um, obviously uh, in a similar way that the the, the previous um, kakahu the Mahutonga had been. Uh, Mahutonga was worn first by Beatrice Fomowina Fom- at the Athens game and uh, Narimu said it was a first and all I could do was cry, she said after the 4-3. This is a sentimental piece that represents so many wonderful values. It's a blessing that has been received on behalf of many iwi, many nations, that gives us the courage to continue the work that we do. Um, so in uh, this piece, uh, there's little ripples and waves along the aho, and the, these represent the athletes, and they go as they go about their journey of being elite athletes. It shows, it represents their ups and downs um, as they train and they progress to that level. Um, and stands for what they want to achieve. For Narimu, it was about contributing to the team, again, um, once more, to our nation, and contributing in a small way to our athletes being successful. The uh, Hurukiwi are from zoos all over the world. Um, She noted they were nesting feathers, and also acknowledged that the links that exist around the world um, in order for the feathers to come home was uh, was pretty special. The huka huka in the piece um, swing and almost shine, and she says that these represent what we want to do, to shine. What we want our sorry, what we want our athletes to do to shine. Um, she said it's quite emotional, but it's also joyful. It's Aotearoa. Um, so whilst learning about uh, Ranu Narimu, I also discovered that she was involved with Tera, and uh, Tera being. Uh, the customary Māori sale that um, I've heard about through um, Fire Roka. She's talked about this quite a bit to us. It's the sole remaining um, customary Māori sale. It's been held in the British Museum for about 200 years and um, research is being done into it to help revitalise cultural knowledge that's contained within the work in Te Rā, in the Mahi, that um, can be studied. So the Tonga is a subject of a three-year research project to document it for the first time, to, great, to get a greater understanding of how Māori sailed and, and um, the techniques that were used to, to go into a piece like this, which obviously had to be incredibly strong, flexible, and stand up to um, all the weather and wind. You know, it was very important for the not to be lost at sea, so that was a very, very important piece of, um, of fatu. And recovering this knowledge through New Zealand's tonga, tohunga is important and um, Te Rā was brought over to New Zealand through the Royal Society to Aparangi Marsden funded project and it, that project was called Fa Karahia Ano Te Rā Kai Ho, Rise Up Again the Billowing Sail. Um, the team behind that included Narimu, so she was one of those that helped get this in place. Um, she obviously specialises in repair, restoration, replication of customary Māori textiles Um, and she also initially visited Tara at the British Museum to help researchers uncover weaving techniques used on the centuries old sale before just um, distributing and sending out the knowledge that they were learning to other Māori weavers and wider public. She said um, about it coming back to New Zealand, when we bring home Tara we welcome home our tipuna, an ancestor of our nation. And uh, it was brought home to an exhibition at, uh, at Christchurch Art Gallery, Te Puna o Whaifatu, 
Um, it was the conservation lab was open for three days and there was public viewings but for invited guests uh, invited Manuhiri and they were allowed to view, touch and study the sail to see what they could all learn collectively um, connecting the sky and ocean sails provide the means by which ancestors of Māori explored and traversed the Moana Nui Akiwa after more than 200 years in storage the construction and materials of the last known sail have never been identified documented nor made publicly available so this group of researchers on its three-year journey to uncover and reclaim knowledge of Tara will benefit everybody. Um, it's easy to say techniques themselves are unique uh, within this, um, you know, within this cell, and they should be known, but people with experience of Ra Nui um, haven't seen anything like this before, so, you know, it's really quite important. Um, materials that have never been identified, the feathers that they don't know about, and um, they wanted to talk about the different knowledge systems that they had access to to unlock all the information and bring it home. So she, Ranui Narimu, interviewed navigators and sailors um, to help with this, um, about their knowledge of Mori voyaging before working to identify the weaving motoronga used to make the sail. Those that have seen it close up notice that it's very beautiful and has a very fine weaving in the piece. Um, uh, Narimu believes the knowledge could help move Moridum forward in a new and positive direction. She hopes enlightened iwi will ultimately spur on a new generation of voyagers. That would be my dream to come out of this, that my great, great, great grandchildren will be hopping on the waka with their ra and sailing off to see their cousin wherever because they have the technology and the knowledge to do it. So it's just a few pictures there about her. Um, so moving to my second weaver. Um, so in contrast to Ranui Narima, uh, Narimu, I wanted to find someone contemporary, somebody who is just at the beginning of their hairina. Um, and whilst researching about Dara, and then obviously the links with it being exhibited at Christchurch Art Gallery, I came across Fiona Collis because um, she also exhibited there. So she uh, called the Aitanga a Hoiti, Te Fano a Pnui, Nati Toihoi, and Nati Rokawa Kitatonga, um, uh, uh, Ona Iwi. Uh, she's 45. She's a fibre and textiles artist. Uh, she uses traditional knowledge and practices handed down by her ancestors, but then she experiments. Um, with tradition and she experiments with what she has with and she uses traditional textiles but also very modern contemporary for ones as well so she's based in Tairafati in Gisborne and stems from a line of traditional weavers that have grounded her practice as a contemporary weaver and artist as a base for where she goes forwards from uh, raised in Tolaga Bay she grew up close to her grandmother Mrs Madeline Ho, the uh, interest for Raranga rang, rang, was cultivated at an early age through her. Uh, Fiona graduated with a bachelor's from Toiho Gura, the School of Māori Visual Arts and Design, and has studied, also studied and worked under many Tohunga uh, Raranga in the fibre arts, and this has contributed to the development of her weaving practice today. Um, she says she's a traditional Māori weaver, but she's not shy to push her work beyond the boundaries of traditional weaving. I am known for my innovative approach to using our weaving techniques to create contemporary artworks combining traditional materials and techniques with contemporary designs and concepts. My work heavily reflects my taha Māori. I love to express these parts of myself through my work. Uh, she did say her favourite medium is muka work still. Um, and she values cloak weaving as a highly skilled and labour intensive craft. But... Um, notes we get to create unique pieces to suit each individual or whānau where stories can be told and displayed genealogy as well and on completion they become very prestigious family heirlooms tonga um in, in looking through some of the her muka work i noticed there was a detail in one of her pieces very similar to the detail um in the mahutonga of ranui narimu that's just the top those little wee looped threads i thought it was quite interesting comparison between the two obviously different I mean, one's very traditional one's very contemporary but within this sort of muka work you can see a little little similarities at the top there um 
Fiona actively uses contemporary channels to exhibit and get her work known. So she very much uses social media. Um, again, this is in contrast to Narimu. Uh, she says, and social media provides an awesome platform to express things I do and connect with an audience in a new and creative way. Sharing my work and commissions online, I have been able to build a good reputation and rapport with people and expand my reach beyond the Tairafati and connect with others in the art world. So very much um, a very modern approach to um, getting her work out there. She likes to document um, things as she goes along. Um, she likes to get her creative process sort of in stages up online, uh, her techniques, and she shares behind the glimpse, the se behind the scenes glimpses from her studio at home. She says she's not an extrovert or a fan of public speaking, but through social media, she can share with people a deeper understanding of her work and what inspired the motivation to create. Um, for example, in 2022, she focused on weaving contemporary style poetonic or so traditional technique, but very modern in, um, in design and colorways and uh, you know, very, very eye catching. Fiona is keen to explore also some experimental weaving, um, working towards an installation of random weave baskets, which she says, unlike the precision of molly weaving, these had a more of a free form flowing appearance as opposed to get there with structured pattern. And she made these using materials from the tile and let the baskets guide her to the final results. Um, in contrast to more traditional Radanga she works on, she Fiona collaborated with FIFA to help deliver the World Cup 2023 branding. So in some ways in alignment with the Olympic Kakahu, um, um, you know, something up on the world stage in both of these weavers. This one though is um, was to do with the FIFA World Cup. Um, there were 32 squares in the emblem um, design and they coordinated with collaborators from over 10 countries and tried to get a really tr truly global representation in the feel of this piece. Um, there was a circular motif, uh, a shared design element seen across many indigenous Australian and New Zealand cultures. Obviously, World Cup was held over this way in Australasia and it was used as the identity for the event to signify the world coming together in Australia and New Zealand. So the New Zealand pattern, which Fiona um, worked on, she, you can sort of see it represented in her mocha work in her, the cargo who I showed earlier, and it's again here. Um, she said she aimed to speak of the coming together of people and cultures, whilst the collective mountains within the composition of the pattern hoped she hoped that it evoked inclusivity, convergence, and the power of the collective. She was keen to highlight the large triangles of Nihu Tanifa, Nihu Tanifa, which represent mountains and geographical locations, bringing women the four corners of the world together. Not very far. Some cultures use mountains as GPS locators of identity, and I wanted to acknowledge the women of the world and the lands they come from. Niho Tanifa, meaning the teeth of the Tanifa, also makes reference to cautionary elements. So moving in the World Cup together, we remember that the players will be driven by competition. Um, it's another of her contemporary pieces that we're looking at here. And this was developed from an idea of a large scale contemporary pew pew. Uh, Na ka ne ka noho ite uranga o te ra. Fiona says the women of Tairafati during the Hakapofri are known for our swing. The sound mm -hmm. of the pew pew slapping against the body when Wahine swing through the haka. The sound the pew pew makes when the Gaiwaro runs out to challenge the Manahiri. And all of these things have designed this work. Um, she's also practiced traditional tukutuku, um, again another alignment, thinking back to the pieces that were um, Narimu uh, worked on for Scott Bass. This piece is uh, Namanu uh, Rua Kapanga, see the detail in that. And then she's developed on from that tukutuku work and she um, has done some contemporary Manu tukutuku, which kites and uh, uh, they've been exhibited uh, in Tamaki Mukauro. So you can see that there. So she's definitely an exciting artist to follow years to come. Similarities with Narumu, contrasts. Um, yeah, both very, very interesting um, artists, weavers to, to follow. Uh, and as Fiona says, ko o te harakeke, te harakeke ko o.
So um, thank you for listening to my koro about um, these uh, na weavers, na kai raranga e rua, kai fatu e rua. Uh, no reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa.